Things are comments that everyone sends 
it's not to mention anything new that I haven't heard. A lot of parents do say exactly the same things that we're saying. And um, as far as pictures are concerned, what you'll notice about the early reading box is that the pictures, they match the text. So in the story it says, I am drinking, while the little girl she is drinking. And it's purposely, the book's been purposely made like that. They want, the makers of the book, they want the child <laughs> to get the picture clues to help make sense of the text. Does that make any yeah. sense to you? Yeah. And that will be right the way through. Yeah. It does become challenging up at green level, but mostly the pictures do match the text. And that's a deliberate we, there's a deliberate reason for that. We want them to get as much detail as they can from pictures. When I introduce a new book to uh, a reading group, I, will, I don't start with the text. I'll, I'll tell them the title, and then we'll talk about the pictures. We'll look through the book, and I'll say, well, what's the little girl doing? And they'll go, ah, oh, she's drinking. I'm like, great, she's drinking. I'm reinforcing that vocabulary on purpose. I mean, this is a very simple text, but even a more challenging text, I'll do exactly the same thing. I would, um, here's a book about dragons. I might say something like, oh, uh, where are the dragons? And then I say, oh, they're at a park. And I'll have a quick scan of the text to see if it says park or playground. And I'll purposely, oh, actually use what's in the book. I was like, oh, here's the part, that's like the playground. And it is kind of like you said, cheating. Yeah. But giving them the vocab yeah. to enable them to be able to read. Because at the end of the day, they need to feel some success in what they're doing. When the, um, when the reading book comes home, they're showing me what they can do. Hopefully they're excited about it, and hopefully they want to show, show you the book. We have heard of children who will hide the book. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I will say, um, the parent might say, so have you got a book tonight? No, no book. <laughs> okay, I assure you, you will be a reader every night. And a lot of the times, I probably say 99.9% of the time, they have read that book. And I've probably read that book more than once. So they should know it. Yeah. I think um, it's time to come and see us if the book is hard. If you're finding that they don't want to do it or the book is too hard, we need to know that. We need to know if they're putting it on or if it really is too hard so we can do a run the report, which is a reading test that we do, just to check that we are giving them reading material that is at the right level. And that, I'm glad you brought that up about the memory. Like and I know that quickly you said about uh, he's not even looking, you feel like he's not looking at the words, that he's just looking at the picture. A lot of early reading is exactly that. It will be just looking at the picture. Um, sometimes we call it fake reading, where they just get the book and they'll look at you the whole time and they're like, and they're like, telling us a great story. And you know full well they haven't read the words. I think um, when that happens, if that's something that's happening a lot, um, be assured that he has read the book in class <laughs> and he has had to say the words and look at the words in the reading group. Um, when they come home to read to you, if he's making it all up, maybe at the end of the story you could say, gosh, you know, that was such an excellent story. I love that story. Can I read that story? And then you take the story and you read it. And hopefully Mr. Brown will listen to you reading it up loud. He says what he thinks on the page. Uh, this yes. is not right. I, I read it straight away. So we'll I would up. say leave them to leave them to look through the book just out of your own for your own interest to see what he does and what story he comes up with. The story might be a pretty good story. It might match up beautifully with the text itself. If it doesn't, I'd read it back to him and say, you know, this is what, maybe not make a big fuss about what it actually said. 
and a lot of first reading is from memory. But, and if you've got a good memory for language and for words, you're, you know, you've got some good foundations there to build on for reading. It won't stay like that forever. It's the first stage. The next stage will be looking more at the words. And when he's reading, I would encourage him to point to the words as he's reading. It just brings his eye back to the words, even if you have to do it first. Or you read a page, Corey reads a page. And then he's hearing how, because he's so repetitive, you'll probably remember the pattern of that story. Say, so, uh, something else that's really um, important to consider when you are doing home reading is to, um, it's picking the right time to do it. If, if it's something, if it's rushed, if it's at a time when they are really distracted or disinterested, it, it's not going to work. It needs to be at a time that works for you and your household. So we, we hear all sorts of ways that families do home reading. We've um, heard of people who, where the child will read the book in the back seat of the car while mum or dad's driving, and that way no one, the driver, can't see the book. And so, and the child knows that, and so the pressure's off them. They know that they can read that book and make mistakes, and no one's going to be all over them about it. So that, that's quite successful to do that. Another way is that you can, um, they can read the reading book to you while you're making dinner. So again, while you are a little distracted and you're not, you know, sitting over them, getting them to fix every single little mistake. It'd be like if I gave you a really difficult piece of writing, like something like some medical text or something, and I'm on at you for every little mistake that you make. You should know this and you should be able to read this and you're a grown up and why can't you remember what that word is? You saw that word back there, just just there on that other, you know, we do the same thing to kids. And exactly, if you were to read a brand new word for the first time, maybe in another language, and then you have to remember that word again at the end from another few pages, you probably wouldn't. And that just sort of highlights how complex and how difficult reading is for children. That yes, there will be days where they nail it and they just get it, and there will be days when they're off and they don't. And to just relax and not be on them, I suppose, at every every error that they make. Don't worry if they make an error. You could say, "Oh, you said whatever it was." Do you want to, oh, have another go. Don't say, do you want another go? They'll just say, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't give them a choice. Just say, oh, just read that bit again. Or, oh, I was not like a sorry. You know, have, it, have them on. Um, you can take turns reading the book. So you read a page, they read a page. And um, talk lots about the book. Like, you know, did they even like that book? Was it interesting for them? Did it remind them of something? Did, um, did they go to that a playground like that? Is there a character in it that they like? Just, is it like another book that they've read before uh, at school with that they're making connections? And it's all pretty much about making sense of what you read. And that's what we want at the end of the day, is we want our children to be able to read accurately and we want them to understand what they're reading. And we, we do that by talking a lot about what they want. And I like to talk about giving them a choice. I know that, um, I think maybe you brought it up, how sometimes when they bring the book bag home, there's about eight readers in the book bag. Uh, I do let my children accumulate books. At reading time, I'll say to them, um, who has a book they want to give back? Some of them will fire them back at me, the ones who don't like reading will fire them all back at me and they'll try to give me the day's book back <laughs> as well. Um, and I say to them that they can pick the ones they want to read at home. Just to give them a little bit of choice. And it may be, I mean, we all have favourite books. We have books that, that just appeal. And they, they are no different. They're just, I mean, 
boring for you, I know, but it is good for them, it's good for their confidence, and it's good for their fluency. I think each time they read it, it sounds better. We, we all talk about fluency, we talk about uh, making reading sound like talking. So when they're reading, I am drinking, you could say, I am drinking. Just model it back to them. So they, they might be like, I don't know why she's repeating the story. <laughs> but you're just giving them that language. I'm reading, um, you've all seen the book Bags, I probably don't need to go over this too much. We do have families who don't know what the book bag is all about. But I'm pretty sure we are all okay with that. Um, where I was going to lead on to with that was about the word dreams. Do you, do you feel like you need this explained? I can. Um, I was just going to ask how, how sure. you recommend that we yeah. um, make them learn the words in correlation to the stories and things like that. Like, I, I know what I'm doing, but I'm, I don't know if it's sure. right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, that they are sent home an alphabet ring and children are sent home a word ring. The colour of the word ring corresponds with the reading level. So if they are bringing home a magenta box, they have magenta words. They bring home read books, they bring home read books. This, it, it does not always correlate, however, and that will be, will be because, like you probably said more in your room, and Sheree as well, um, we do get children who are wonderful at rote learning, and they will look at these words and memorise them almost like a song. And we know those children, um, they don't even look at these words, and they can just look at you like this and say, it, the, what, we, said, me, mum, I, in. And we know that they haven't learned them. They've memorised the words, but they, they don't know the words. Okay, so what we um, suggest that you do is you can take the word rings off the ring. I don't know if any of you have seen how you can do And it can be quite daunting for a child to be presented with, you know, 26 words to, to learn and learn them quickly. So to make it more manageable, you might only choose four or six words in a week. It may be less depending on the child. If your child's really keen and motivated, more. But if not, I'd say less. So I would start off using doing things like um, look at your two sound words. So it, 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 it and in, am. I'd save here for another day. <laughs> and I would say for another day. Is. So, you know, break them off and, and sort them out. If you want help with sorting them, I'm more than happy to do that for you. So I would um, make two, make a pile of the two sound words. I'd make a pile of the three letter words as well. Like and, and is a lovely little word to know because luckily you can read it phonetically. It's an and, and. But then you have a look at this little tricky customer. Tahe, We just tell them the word is the, and you just have to know it. And we can't sound all the words out. This is just a word they need to commit to memory. A little word like mum, yes, that's a nice, easy word for them to know. Once they know their letters and sounds, they can start breaking these three letter words down. They'll be, you'll be able to say, what's the first sound? And they should be able to say, mmm. You say, what's the last sound? Mmm, what's the middle sound? That might be quite hard. I would just tell them. I'd say that you sounds like you and you sounds like ah. Okay, and that's all right to tell them. Dad, lovely, da, 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 dad. I know they were all like that. Leave these hard words for last, like mother. There is a father in there. I'll put those ones together and hopefully they'll notice that it's just the first sound that changes. Another little game you can play is, you know, you might just look at these words for two or three weeks, depending how long it takes for your child to, to know these words. You can have them on the table, on the floor, and you might say, okay, where's go? 
imagined you'd gone. He said, I'm the app. It doesn't really matter how you do it, as long as, as it's consistent and it's regular. I, I have heard of families where they're so time pressed for, for reading and word rings and what have you that they'll wait for the weekend. So they won't actually do any reading or any word rings or do nothing because they have very busy weeks and I get that. But then on the weekend they'll sit their child down and spend like a good hour or more being a teacher and making them read a week's worth of readers uh, going through the word ring ten times, I mean, I, you know, I would discourage you from doing that because it, it would, it's hard work for you, not a work for yourself to be doing that, and it would just put your child right off reading, don't stop, they'll, they'll lose these word rings, they'll, they'll stop reading my words from the books. If you can make it into a game, if you can make it fun, if you can bribe them, do it. Do whatever, you, do whatever you have to do to make it work. Um, I think what Sharon was saying, was it one of your children who didn't like reading and they wouldn't read to you, so they would, was it bring your mum or something, and read the, the story over the phone. So that's another way around it. My daughter wouldn't read either, she just didn't like it. And so when she was in the bar, they'd go into the bathroom with her book. And she couldn't escape. <laughs> so I would read the story to her, and she might read it like that. Otherwise, you know. So we do get that reading is not always an easy thing. And if you are getting stuck for ideas, please just ask us. We can come up. Don't mind. But lots of ideas, lots of games and activities you can do with the word rings. Even things like copying some of the words down. Or you might have your reading book, and often you'll see that there is a repetitive word in it. It might be am, 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 am on every page. And so you might say, I'll give you one minute, can you find am, go? And you make it like a race, and they try and find am. You maybe write like the word am. I would stop then. Yeah, I would say I'd leave it. So all right, either try it again later on, or, yes, or just leave it, leave it yeah. for that night. Even if you, you know, write in the home reading notebook that, that goes home between school and home, you could just say, um, "We'll read tomorrow. Yeah. We'll try tomorrow." Yeah. Or, okay. or wasn't interested. Maybe that she was tired yeah. or didn't like the book. Like, you know, some of the books are not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> or you could say, go pick another book. If she doesn't have a reading book in her book bag, and maybe a book off her bookshelf. The car in the car park before school is a really good place to read. Yeah, I've done that a couple of times. <laughs> it doesn't matter when you do it, as long as you're doing it. And, and really, you know, five, ten minutes yeah. is all it has to be. I wouldn't make it a half hour lesson. Mm -hmm. It's too much. They've had such a big full on day at school. Mm -hmm. They really have. They when they get here they hit the ground running. They have quite a full program that they are engaged in and they are on, you know, the whole time that they are here. And when they get home they need to be a kid. They need a rest. They need to cut loose, yell, you know, <laughs> do all the things they don't get away with here. <laughs> <laughs> you can take these off as well and play little games with them. Like um, you might say, let us need a names one one day. You might say, can you find P? Can you find R? Can you find T? Another time, you might just use the sounds. You might say, can you find T? Can you find Can you find oh, oh. Just mixing it up, and it's really important to give them the letter names and the letter sounds. Do you always have to do it together? And as long as they are hearing the, the letter name and the letter sound, we normally find that once they have a really good command of letters and sounds, they're ready for the words. Because then you can say they might have the word and, it's like, do you know the first sound? And they'll go, ah, ah, ah. And it's like, do you know the last sound? And just feel so successful. And you say, well, you just read the word for him. And they're like, oh, wow. 
and you can show them if you can write, this is what we do in class, we will say if you can read the word and, you can, you can read the word hand, and you show them hand, and then you go through all the words that sound like hand. It's really empowering for them. It's a good one. It seems a lot of time right next. Good. Good. Loves it. It's fantastic. How are you feeling about leaving the eggs? Do you like it? Yeah. Do you need it? Well, not five minutes. I can have it off in a minute. She's like, I need to be on the eating eggs. Because Francis has got this number. She's very confused. So, if she's in the right then it's okay. But if somebody else is high, I need to get home and do it. I need to. Oh, so someone else in the class says, well, I'm on May yeah. 26. Yeah. She's like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it is a very good program. It's very repetitive. I don't know if you've had a chance yourself to actually listen to that little ant. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I am. Exactly. you find this and then what I do like about reading these is that it is repetitive and I like that uh, it's at their pace, you know, it, it's, a, it's gradual and they can't progress until they have succeeded and completed a map. They can't just go off anywhere. I've actually turned the playroom off. I don't know if that's worked at home, but they're still able to get on into the playroom. But like, so they don't get any points, they don't accumulate any golden eggs if they go into the playroom. Mm -hmm. They only get points if they complete maps. Mm -hmm. Some of them will just go in the playroom and never come up. It's up to you and, and probably up to the interest level, it could be something you could say when we've finished reading you can go on reading it, if it's something you think particularly enjoy. How long would they spend on it? Well, who would spend it? If he was allowed. If he was allowed. Who would spend it? Oh yeah, I'd put a lot on it. I'd put a lot on it. You've noticed on the back of the reading books, not that oh. Oh, there's a colour wheel. There's not a colour wheel on the back, there'll be a flower. Or there'll be um, a whole lot of colourful lines on the back. That indicates what reading level the book is. Okay. Um, if it has an eye by next to the colour, that means we child should be able to read that independently. If there's an S text on it, it means it's a story to be shared, which means they need some support from an adult or a sibling, a rival reader. If there's a G next to it, it means it's their guided reading level that they've been tested on. Um, so some people have never noticed that there is actually a colour wheel on the back, and the colour wheel is a graded system that we use here in New Zealand for the reader to read books and children progress through the junior school through the colours. So at the moment we will we'll start reading on magenta, the pink books, and we work our way through. By the end of your child's first year at school, the expectation, the national standard expectation, is that they will be reading on that green. And then if you're looking at that colour wheel, you'll see that in each photo. The second year of school, they are expected to finish on two points. They are only expected to achieve two more reading levels in that second year at school. In the third year, it's two more levels again. So you can see that in that first, in the first year of school, they are expected to achieve a lot. So are they expected to get to green, but what is the majority of the children getting? Yeah. I would say the majority are not getting to green. Okay. The majority would probably finish yellow, and blue. Okay. And then you'll get a few at red and a few again still at magenta. Okay. Yeah. And 
what they haven't allowed, the ministry haven't allowed for, is that for some children it takes six months just to settle and to feel secure and safe in school. And they are not going to learn anything until they are ready to learn. And a child who's ready to learn can cope without mum being with them all day. They can sit and listen and stay on task. They need to have all the key competencies together before they can make progress with their learning. So, you know, some children will sit on the gentle pink, oh, I'm sorry, with the pink red most of the year. My daughter did not like school. My eldest daughter, she hated school. She, we made this big fuss about when you're five, you go to school. She went to school, she came home, she said, I did it. I did school, done it, ticked off. She didn't understand that she could keep going back. So it, it was a, school was a big adjustment for her. She just didn't like it. And by the end of her first year at school, she was reading read books. So as a teacher, my child reading read books, I was beside myself. I thought, how can this be? I know she, I know that she's an intelligent girl, that she had all her own language, she had lots of experiences when we were in a book-rich home, but yet she was still reading read books. And when she decided she was ready, she blitzed through in the second year and got to improve on in a very short space of time. And it was on her terms. And sometimes our kids are like that. It'll be when they want to, not when we want to, but when they want to. Uh, what we do really well here at Bombay is we track our children. We call them our target children. So uh, we test our children regularly. We know what the levels they are at. We know where the gaps are. We know what the needs are. And we know what we need to do. Um, we monitor them really closely because we don't want them to carry on through the school having these big gaps in reading that and you know having the following year's teacher trying to play catch ups all the time. So we will put interventions in if we have to and we do that um, by using our teacher aides. We're very lucky to have teacher aides here and they will work with a group and work on word rings, alphabet, sounds even listening to them reading, the readers, if we feel that they need that mileage, we do have mileage, that means lots of practice, reading those books over and over and over. Um, we have a reading recovery teacher here. Uh, Sheree is reading recovery trained, so is Tori. So we have very expertise on hand as well. Um, Pauline is just a reading literacy guru, just a fountain of knowledge. You're more than welcome to email Pauline if you want more, if you don't feel that you're getting enough from the classroom teacher. But, but do start with us. We are your first point of call. It's really important that you keep that communication going with us. If you don't, you know, it can be awkward to approach us at times. And I know that, Nicola, you've said, oh, but you, you know, you're always busy. And I know that I look like, a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, yeah, I know that, but just say stop. Just <laughs> say stop. Because <laughs> you know we are here for you. At the end of the day, that's what why we teach us. We want the best outcomes for your children. And if we're all on the same page, it's all in love for everybody. So um, email if, if that's easier. Send a note. Write in a notebook. Write in a homework book if you want to. If it's too hard or on the songs I won't do the word ring or we're not getting anywhere with, with this. Um, just let your frustrations know to us. It's so yeah, I just wanted to show you that, that there's a lot of learning involved in those levels between pink to green and not to be too disheartened if the child doesn't meet the target expectation. If your child is, has finished reading on blue at the end of the year, you should be so proud of them. They're so close. 
they have to get to level 12, if they're reading at level 11, we have to say that they did not reach standard. We can't say, they nearly, 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 <laughs> they're so, so close. We can verbalise that to you, but we, um, we have to actually say at standard below standard if they um, go below standard, as we say. Uh, oh, the, these are just a few quotes from some of our gurus that we refer to in reading. Um, Tom Nicholson is a very highly regarded educator and he says, it's about phonics. He says, teaching phonemic awareness can reduce the risk of children falling behind in reading. Phonemic awareness is a prerequisite for reading. Yolanda Sorrell, Said, children who have good phonological awareness at school entry, better reading outcomes than children who do not. And Joy Alcock has said, without accurate phonics knowledge, efficient reading and writing is impossible. But we're just reiterating how important phonics are. So phonics will be as letters and sounds. With phonetic awareness, it's talking about do your children hear rhyme in words? Do they hear patterns in speech? Can they sing along to a nursery rhyme? Can they recite a nursery rhyme? And can, if you play the game like Old One Out, do they get which word is the Old One Out? If you said hat, cat, tatum, would they get that? So that's, that's what we're talking about here. So. Oh, how to help if you're stuck, I'll give you all a handout about what to do if your child is getting difficult, finding reading difficult, could be a word. Uh, these are things that we say here that we can say at home as well. You might say to them, um, look at the first word of the first letter and get them to sound it. So it might be, um, I am, oh, I am drinking is a hard one. <laughs> it might be, I am eating. You might say, I am, eh, 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 and they might get it, eating. If they are not getting it after a couple of goes, I'd just tell them that you're going to lose all momentum of the story and they're going to lose interest too. And it's all right to just tell them sometimes. And look at the pictures for clues. Talk about the story. Give them time to fix, fix a mistake if they have said something wrong. You might give them a funny look to say, hmm, you might go, really, really? I am dancing around the room. Because, you know, sometimes they will invent text and they will make up two more words that weren't even on the page. <laughs> so then you just say, hmm, really? Really? That's that? And just bring your attention back to it. Um, tell them if you don't want to lose the momentum of the story or if they're getting frustrated. You can look for little words inside big words. Like the word into, you could put your finger over the two and they might know in. Um, a repetitive word that was in the story but was words, you might get them to find it on the, at the end, not on every page, but maybe at the end of reading it, you might say, gosh, that word is was in the story a lot. Do you, you can find it is on this page, on this page, on this page. If they're not interested, don't do it. But if they are, that's another little way to hook them in. And lots of positive feedback. Tell them how smart they are, whoever they are. And, and it just, you know, if they feel successful and, they, and you are giving them lots of praise and confidence, they'll want to read. They'll feel really great about it. And we've already talked about this, if your child doesn't like reading, so that's where you read to them. You give them choices about what they are reading. Um, games that you can play. Wrap it up, um, reading is, is very complex. Not all children will progress at the same rate. Reading can be challenging. But, um, I went to a Yolanda Sorrell course recently, and so did Tori, and what was really, she was amazing, but what else was really wonderful was she showed us these brain scans of children, and um, one was of a dyslexic child, and they followed this child after this child had had, had some intervention. 
And what it showed was that you can rewire the brain, that it is possible to remake those connections in reading. So even the most hopeless case, we, they are teachable, we can teach children to read. We can do it much, we take time, but it's a thing. Um, read together every day, allowing your child to reread favourite books, talk about books, help them to learn the letters, the names and the sounds, and they can't do it by themselves. I think some of our parents think that, oh yeah, you've got a word ring, off you go, go, go do your word ring, off you go. They can't do that by themselves. You actually do need to do it with them. Okay? Take some off, that's too onerous for you. Take them off, do four a week. Make it, make it easy. <coughs> Same with the sight words. The sight words you hear us saying that are just the word ring. The words on the word ring. We call those sight words. And sometimes we call them high frequency words. Same thing. It's just the, those little words on the ring. Make reading fun. Don't try to fix every single mistake. That will put them off reading. We want them to have a love of reading at the end of the day. And please let us know if the books are too hard or your child is losing interest if you want some ideas and I'm more than happy for you to put me an email, pop your head in, I know I look like I'm busy all the time but I will stop, <laughs> I promise.